Alas, poor Sanyong. I knew it, Horatio, a brand of infinite jest, the butt of excellent mirth. It hath borne just 656 proud shits villains upon its back in the first six months of 2020, and now how precarious in my imagination is. I never actually thought Bill Shakespeare's Hamlet would see the light of day in one of my uplifting and world-class investigative reports designed to inform and entertain you and, of course, make Australia less shit. Remember, vote for me during your next erection. You know you want to. It's funny how things turn out, isn't it? Hamlet, for example, so kill Bill at the very end. Sanyong, the Titanic, the zombie pandemic, and Trump, whatever. Frankly, I never thought I would be wearing a mask into a bank and demanding money either. Everything in life is a combination of good and bad news. I think you'd agree. <laughs> Expect the unexpected hashtag. Fuck you very much, 2020. Is it not hilarious how things turn out? I ask you. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. You can inquire at the website about that. Regarding the growing parallels between Hamlet and Sanyo, okay? The whole brand could collapse at any time. It's currently that precarious. It's at risk of becoming just another automotive black comedy, kind of like Holden, or worse, Infinity. And I'd suggest this is a parcel that you do not want to be left holding when the music suddenly stops. So no, on balance, I don't think I'd give Sanyong the benefit of the doubt any longer, or of course, any cash. Here's a question from Norman Brandon, a dude just like you, except, of course, that he's actually considering buying a new Sanyong. Let us go in now with the cold steel and cure this before Gertrude sips the poison and the three-foot razor blade ensues. Hashtag Shakespeare. I'm researching a round horse Australia tow vehicle. I have a 1.5 ton boat and I'll get a lightweight camper when I do the trip. I was thinking Pajero Sport or Triton GLX Plus, maybe GLS. But recently read reviews on the new Sanyong Musso Ute, the attraction being value, tow capacity, cabin refinement, plus all the tech for the money and the seven year warranty. Cabin refinement is appealing for the many hours touring on bitumen on the big trip. I suspect reliability is fine as the Koreans seem to build reasonable cars, but depreciation may be a hidden cost to ownership. So I am interested to know your thoughts. It's kind of like dealing with Pandora, isn't it, you know? Once you elicit my thoughts, it's going to be kind of difficult to get them back in the box, I'd suggest. This reliability presumption needs a quick reality check, I think, because it is grossly unfair to lump all of, quote-unquote, the Koreans together. Although I guess it's a kind of neat soundbite when you do it. The reality is that Sanyong is a flea on the ass of the South Korean car industry, and when you're making cars, size really does matter. Hyundai Motor Group, HMG, which is basically Hyundai plus Kia, they made 3.2 million cars in South Korea back in 2018. That's according to Market Watch. But total HMG sales, they were more than double that globally, 7.3 million, because they have factories everywhere, like Retardistan, Europe, India, China, like that. That's Hyundai Kia, okay? 7.3 million vehicles. Sanyong made 142,000 cars in the same time. So every time Sanyong spits out a car, HMG spits out 50, ballpark. 
The pro tip here, okay, in the context of modern automotive manufacturing, 142,000 units is simply not viable because of the economies of scale. It's just not, all right? You need double that kind of minimum. Sanyong is actually the fifth biggest brand in South Korea, and it struggles. It's been on the ropes so many times. The hierarchy goes Hyundai, Kia, and then Daylight to GM Korea. <coughs> Hitbox! <coughs> Pardon me. Renault Samsung in fourth spot, and then Sanyong. I was recently quite bullish about Sanyong and hopeful as well. The company's first wholly owned subsidiary import operation was here in Schittsville. That opened its doors in June of 2018 and bonus points for putting an actual Aussie in charge. Oi, oi, oi. Guy named Tim Smith, a nice bloke too. They were so bullish, you know, here for the long haul, committed to Australia, blah, blah, blah. I even think they were quite sincere about it at the time, but they promised things, okay, like local suspension tune on the Rexton Ultimate, and my understanding is that that has kind of just stalled on the grid. Promised, but not delivered. If it has been delivered, I can't find it. What happened instead, right, was two things. Mr. Smith departed after just 16 months in the top job, and that was back in November. And the official line there was like, he's out of here and we're currently recruiting for a replacement. So when I hear that on the balance of probabilities, I presume that Mr. Smith got up and left for some reason, somewhat unexpectedly, and they kind of ran around in the manner of decapitated chooks for a little while. They put their top bean counter, Myungsu Kang, in charge in the interim. Bean counters do know how to cut costs and argue the toss about your expenses. They're quite adept there, but they often fail to grasp the critical intangibles so necessary to make a fledgling brand succeed, and especially one that has failed about 20 times previously. And then, in April of this year, the dudes at Mahindra over in India, they started to Second guess their bold investment fantasy about making Sanyong profitable by 2022. The backstory there, okay, is that Mahindra rescued Sanyong from the brink of insolvency in 2010, and they took a 75-ish percent stake in the company at that time, but it's been a dog of an investment for them for about a decade. They had planned to inject about... Half a billion bucks more, Australian, but they boned that idea less than two months after announcing it this year when the zombie pandemic hit like a big fat tsunami. The best they could do at that time was offer Sanyong a lifeline of about 50 million Schittsvillian micro pesos to keep the doors open for the next three months, which ends about now, coincidentally. And rubbing salt into the wounds. Sanyong owes roughly 100 million Schittsvillian to the Korea Development Bank. And that debt is inconveniently due roughly now. Oops a daisy. This is unfortunate, no doubt, okay? But Sanyong is a big company and they made assurances to me when I road tested their Rexton Ultimate. They said, try our fine Rexton, we are deeply committed to Shitsville this time, etc. And because I'm kind of inconsequential here, okay, I really don't matter, but what that really means is, when they spoke to me, they made assurances to you about them and what they stood for. In that sense, you know, I'm really just a conduit between you and what they say. Thus, they said to you, we're quite serious about Australia. We're doing this local suspension tune for Rexton. We will make it retrospectively available to Rexton owners once we've finalised it with the factory. My understanding is that Iron Man locally has developed a suspension upgrade for the Musso, which is available from Sanyong dealers. But 
as I read it, this is an accessory kit which is available to you at extra cost. It's actually one of two kits that you can buy with two different amounts of suspension lift. Mr. Smith assured me this about Rexton on the phone and by email at about the time I was editing that Rexton Ultimate review. On April the 12th last year, Mr. Smith told me. Phase two of the tuning project was sent to Korea two weeks ago. Recommended setup, etc. Head office are just making the adjustments to a local vehicle in Korea, as well as sending to Australia necessary parts for testing. Iron Man are also preparing a local accessory lift kit once the spec is approved. Approximately eight weeks away. Just to be crystal clear here, I am not accusing Mr. Smith of lying to me. I believe he faithfully represented to me what he believed to be true at the time. But that was 15 months ago, right? And I cannot find any evidence that this tune was implemented or is available today. My sources tell me that this has not occurred. And the standard suspension in that vehicle it's emphatically shit, okay? That's just how it is on Australian roads. Sanyong also committed to 3,000 sales here in Chitsville for 2019. That was the target, and they actually sold about 1,000. That's not even a pass. It's not even friggin' close. And achieving critical mass is essential to success, to viability, right? They had been selling about 200 vehicles a month initially since this local import operation started, but sales have basically halved since the impending collapse of the business at the highest level went public and the pandemic hit globally at full strength. The bottom line, okay, it's $44,000 plus on road costs for a fully loaded dual cab Sanyong Musa. It's $48,000 for a Triton GLS. And given the relativity of risk, as I perceive it anyway, it could well cost you more than double the 4,000 bucks you notionally save on the Triton up front if you buy the Musso and if Sanyong collapses or if the bean counters just put their heads together and decide Australia is just no longer worth the bother. And objectively, it's not worth the bother, not at 1,300 sales annually or something. It's just not. If that happens and you own a Musso, you're holding a car that nobody wants in the used market with a resale value, therefore, that just jumped into the express elevator and hammered the button marked basement. And good luck with the parts, the servicing, the diagnostics and the support for recalls and service campaigns into the future, if that happens. And let's not forget, the Triton or a Pajero Sport is a substantially better vehicle in a dozen objectively measurable ways. Far be it from me to tell anyone what to do, but... <laughs> Who am I kidding? That's essentially the only friggin' reason I'm sitting here. That... And, of course, to promote myself at your next erection and your lovely wife. Don't forget to send me her name and address so I can admit her to the... Let's call it a... Uh, a party. I promise you sincerely that I will work with you, with you both, you and your lovely wife, as your next prime mincer, and together we will make Australia less shit something no Prime Minister has managed to achieve for this beautiful girt by sea island continent impossibly packed full of deadly reptiles and spiders at any time in the past 15 years, incredibly. Look, Sanyong was looking good 15 months ago, okay, but that ship has sailed and the risks are through the roof. Assurances were made about this, but... Someone forgot to validate the parking, and the bank is doubtless drafting a foreclosure notice as we speak. Or it might be, and if I had the cash burning a hole in my pocket, this would really matter to me. And I'm kind of thus unmotivated to give that company any further doubt slash benefit. Sanyong is simply too risky to buy into 
right now.